Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fightwave, and today I'm joined by a lightweight that I'm very excited to speak with today. If you know anything about me, you know I love the lightweight division. I don't say it enough, and I'll say it once again. You know, I love the lightweight division, and this man is no exception. One of my favorite lightweights on the active roster. His debut didn't go his way, but he's a fan of... Uh, if you're a fan of Polish mixed martial arts and British mixed martial arts, you'll know who I'm talking to today. He's the pride of Poland, the pride of England. I'm joined by Michal Figlak. How are we doing today, brother? I'm doing very good. Absolutely, man. And obviously, thank you so much for your time. You know, uh, you're one of the fighters that I've been really excited to speak with because I really love what you did in Cage Warriors. Obviously, you've gotten some great wins there over guys like Oban Elliott and Agi Sardari, you know, two guys that I look at very highly. And you've showcased time and time again that you're one of the best guys on the British Mish British. British mixed martial arts scene <laughs> and you know it's just been somebody that I've really been looking forward to watching in the octagon I want to ask you obviously how you were doing first and foremost and how everything's been yeah I'm doing very well now I'm about now next week will be the six month after my operation that I had my on my leg because I got injured from uh, before my last fight and I'm now up to a stage where I can do plyometrics and next week on Tuesday will be exactly the sixth month and that will be the time where I can spar for the first time. Only boxing, but I've been waiting for this for a long time now. <laughs> I'm really itching to go. No, yeah. So I'm looking forward to Tuesday because I can get some sparring in. No, yeah, absolutely. And obviously you mentioned the unfortunate circumstances of heading into UFC 286. You were in, you got an injury to your ACL, you know, completely blew it out if I remember correctly, right? I mean, just an unfortunate set yeah. of circumstances for somebody who the fans were looking forward to watching coming into that event. Talk to me just about how the recovery has been thus far. You know, you mentioned next Tuesday will be six months to the day that you got your surgery or procedure. How has the recovery been and, you know, how has it just been? Because... I spoke to Modestus Bukowskis about his injury when he sustained it, and I think it takes a fighter to a whole different level or a whole different state of mind when all you want to do is train and you can't train. I wanted to ask you just how the journey has been and how the recovery has been thus far. I, I think it's, it's been very good. I, I've been learning a lot, uh, in terms, especially in terms of my patience. I've been learning with my patients because you can't go too fast with the rehabilitation. So that, that's what I really needed to take into consideration. And even when I, when I was speaking to the doctor uh, that performed the surgery, and I said to him, you need to lay out a plan for me that's perfect because I'm going to push it to the limit. And then he said that I have to take it easy. And there was just the same with my physios. They'd be like, just take it easy, Mike, take it easy. But uh, I have been, and my leg is doing very well. It's been progressing very well. I've been working a little bit with the UFC PI as well. They've been helping me out. And to be honest, the UFC has been very good in terms of the medical care that they have provided for me and uh, and the aftercare as well. Uh, for the uh, I had some contact with the PI. Uh, they gave me a call. Uh, they, we scheduled the meeting where they gave me like a plan of rehabilitation for my knee, which was really good. And yeah, I've been following that. And progressively, I've been moving on to, you know, I'm at a stage now where I can do boxing. I hit the uh, pads, hit the bag, and I'm feeling very good. But also, I have used this time wisely, I believe. Uh, that is because my brother, well, he will be fighting in November uh, on Cage Warriors. And he's been training with Leon Edwards and some of the guys uh, at Renegade in Birmingham. And I go to every single sparring session that he goes to. And I literally watch and I learn from the from the outside. I give him advice. I watch, I watch him sparring all the time. I'm watching him training all the time. So I'm learning at the same time. And I can honestly say that I just can't wait to get back in there because I know that although I wasn't able to necessarily do all the physical work, I have been doing the mental. I have been developing the technical aspects of my fighting. Um, and from the outside, and I'm really happy with that. No, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned, obviously, going up to Renegade in Birmingham and, you know, seeing your brother get in work with the champion and really just getting mental notes, setting mental notes, getting little details from the champion to implement into your game, you know. I think the number one thing when I see fighters get injured is just about staying busy. If you do what you can in your control as opposed to trying to, like you said, force the recovery. But like you mentioned, 
maximizing on how much you can speed up the recovery without pushing the boundaries and seeing how fast you can really get back to 100%. But I love that you mentioned, obviously, going up to Birmingham and seeing your brother getting work with the champion Leon Edwards and the great camp that they got over there at Renegade in Birmingham. Uh, you know, talk to me just about being there, seeing the champion, uh, you know, in his element, getting the work in and picking up details there, because I can imagine that's a one of a kind experience to be able to watch a champion put in time into the craft firsthand. Yeah, it, it is a really good experience. And uh, what I've learned in this game is that the guys that are right at the top and the guys that I knew see most guys that is. And the guys who are really good at this are very good people and they are open to share information with you, train, just training stuff. And uh, it's exactly the same with Leon. Leon is a, is a guy that will, you know, after the session, he'll, he'll give you some advice. Uh, you can ask him questions, he'll just answer them. He's a very good guy. And my brother is doing quite a lot of work with him. And, and I'm also learning, of course, from my brother because I can see him improving and and the way he's adjusting his game to be able to spar with, with a world champion, right? And with uh, others and keep climbing the cage warriors as well. And I can see that I can learn a lot from him as well. So um, it's the experience is very good. No, yeah, absolutely. And I think it speaks to the multitude of how far British mixed martial arts has come, but also you share a very interesting dynamic with your brother where you both have two great fighting communities behind you. The Polish mixed martial arts community and the British mixed martial arts community. The best of both worlds, I like to call it. And honestly, it's been phenomenal to see how far both have come. You know, with England producing its first homegrown English champion in the form of Leon Edwards. And then obviously Poland cementing multiple contenders in the form of, you know, Marcin Tibura, Mateusz Gamrot. You know, the list goes on. Jan Blakowicz, the list goes on and on. And then obviously the main event at UFC London this past uh, some this up this recent summer I should add you know Tom Aspinall versus Marcin Chibura two fellow Polish peop uh, fighters Tom from Britain obviously and you know Marcin from Poland I want to ask you was there any moral dilemma when watching that fight you're like ah, I just want a good fight I don't want to see either of them lose no I think I was I was behind Marcin Tibura uh, in that fight but I knew how good Aspinall is I think Aspinall's roots to Poland are. He's uh, does he does he consider himself Polish? Because I think he's only one. He's one quarter, right? He's. I, I think, think he's, he's mentioned he's it one before. Of his parents is. He think, yeah. I think. Yeah, he I know he's mentioned his roots. Yeah. yeah. He even tried speaking Polish to Mati on one of the face-offs. Yeah. <laughs> but then when Tibura he answered him, he didn't understand none of it. So I think he just got that got that one sentence prepared. But yeah, to be honest, that fight. I knew that it was going to be very difficult for Tibura because of how good Aspinall is. I mean, he's he's been on a tear, and I would, and I'm waiting for him to get a fight. He he might need one more before fighting John Jones, but I'm looking forward to that fight because he has crazy agility for a guy that heavy. He moves very good, very very, and also very well rounded. But I think his best attribute is the fact that he can move like a probably a middleweight. No, Which yeah, is absolutely. amazing for a guy that size. Absolutely, I agree 100%. And like I mentioned earlier, it just speaks to the depth of the division and speaks to the depth of how far British mixed martial arts has come and Polish mixed martial arts has come. What has it been? What has your thoughts been on just the come up of both the countries in mixed martial arts and being able to foresee it from two different aspects? I know you were recently in Poland, you know, seeing how they train over there and then also seeing how they train in England where you, you know, where you reside. Talk to me just about that dynamic and what it's meant for you to see both countries be so successful in MMA as of late? Yeah, I think in Poland, uh, they train well as well. They, they train well. I've trained a couple times at Red Dragon in my uh, home hometown uh, where I was born. And yeah, they train well. That's where Gamrot, Gamrot trains there. I didn't get to train with him when I did go there a couple years back because he was in America. But they have a very good team there, uh, a lot of guys my, in my weight class, so I'll definitely will be popping over there, um, maybe in, proper, in preparation for my next fight. In Poland, the, the MMA scene is very big because of KSW. KSW has, has increased the market there a lot in terms of they put all the promotion out there, right? 
and you can see that the fighters in in Poland are treated like a little bit of celebrities. They are they are they are seen more than in the UK. I think in the UK it's still slightly hidden. I think there needs to be a lot more promotion done in the UK to bring it up so that everyone kind of everyone around knows what the top promotion is or what the top promotions are and then they obviously know about the UFC but then they don't necessarily know about the smaller promotions that kind of breed the fighters to go into the UFC no, so yeah, I think uh, cage warriors has to catch up in that term but in terms of talent in in the UK it, it, there's a lot of very good guys who are UFC caliber and, and who are in the UFC I think there's a there's a lot more than Polish fighters I think in I'm one of nine Polish fighters in the UFC and I think in the UK it's got to be around 15 to 20 if I'm correct so yeah it's a uh, both both countries have very good fighters no yeah absolutely and I think I agree with you there you know in Polish mixed martial arts KSW has done a phenomenal job in terms of marketing and you know, bringing out outside talent you know I remember the days when Roberto Soldic was fighting in KSW and then eventually made his way over to 1FC. The way that it attracts outside talent and the way that it promotes itself is unlike any other promotion I've seen to the point where, um, you know, Americans stateside always talk about KSW if they're avid watchers of the sport. That's the kind of ripple effect that it has. And I can only imagine the effect that it has on Polish MMA. And then you mentioned, obviously, you know, being down to Gamrot's gym at Red Dragon a few times, you know, Talk to me about just what it's been like to see the progression in and seeing these fighters be so, you know, successful in the UFC octagon. Because I can imagine it only motivates you in your journey and your path because you're still very young, Michal. You're only like you're only 27 years of age, which you've barely just hit your stride and you've looked so good thus far in your career that it's like it's only gotta be fulfilling for you to see the respect that you've garnered from the pros. And also just watching them do what they do best. What are your thoughts on obviously just seeing these guys perform at the highest level? Yeah, it's it's very good to see. And it, I think in, ter in terms of the Polish fighters that went into the UFC, Jan Wachowicz was one of the main guys that I was looking at because when I was younger, I used to watch him in KSW. And then he went into the UFC. And I don't think many... I, I think he had like a... He won a couple, then lost a couple, and then people kind of... Uh, his hype went down, let's say, and then, and then he climbed back up and he made it and he became a world champion. And just watching that was very motivating and inspiring. But I, I'm also inspired by the UK fighters because I have been here now for most of my life. Yeah, I've been here more than half of my life, and the, uh, you know, training with Leon or Arnold Allen. Uh, that's been motivating and to be able to test myself against them and see where I am as well has been very good and yeah of course there's a lot of inspiration but uh, yeah I have to say that you know having Leon a world champion at welterweight which is a very stacked division uh, to have him training and then you know I'm I'm watching him learning from him all the time that's been very good no yeah absolutely and I mean you get the best of both worlds. I mean, honestly, I feel like it's just you've got two great camps you can go to. You've got multiple different places you can get good looks. It's just it's a phenomenal position to be in. And I think, you know, more importantly, it speaks to the caliber of fighters that you attract because you've always been a professional. You've always been somebody who doesn't shy away from a challenge. And it reflect your record kind of reflects that. You look at your ref record and mo for the most part, when guys you were fighting them, they were you know unbroken they were at you know perfect records they were either four and oh six and one you know you haven't shied away from picking the best guys in the world and you've produced some interesting you know rivalries throughout the build-up to your fights you know i was looking at you know uh just your fight with open elliot the build-up to that both of you guys you know right now very different places you know him on the cusp of making it to the ufc you already won fight within the ufc you know reflecting on the fights that you've had in the past how would you say that these matchups have impacted you as a human being just facing the pedigree of opponents that you fought? Yeah, it just, it just kept bringing me up to a higher and higher level, yeah? So that, that's, what I, that, that's what I wanted when I started fighting, right? I wanted to fight the best guys. And I knew that when I went, to, went into Cage Warriors and even before that, I knew that I can handle the best guys in the UK and that I can uh, get to the UFC. I already knew that I could get to to the UFC then. So I was just, I was like, give me anyone. Give me anyone. I think after my 
second fight in cage or is that uh, I did an interview and they said to me oh who would you like to fight next and I just said someone undefeated give me someone undefeated because I know that these guys are harder to finish they, they come to fight and I just wanted I wanted the best guys and yeah you can see from my record it's mainly guys who at the time had better records than me and I think that's what UFC saw as well before signing me right they saw that I, I take on the challenges and they signed me no yeah definitely and then more importantly, I think you're obviously in a unique position in the sense that you and your brother also share the same journey. You know, both of you guys fighters, both of you guys in the come up. What has it meant for you to share this journey alongside your brother and, you know, bring honor to the Fig Lack name and just be able to represent your family at the highest stature possible, at the highest division of your discipline in the UFC and him very much on his way to the UFC? What does it mean to you? Yeah, you, you hit a good point there and you said to bring honor and uh, the honor to my name right that's that's one of my main goals is to get my name out there the to show the world that the fig like name is is the name that you know that i'm going to become a world champion it's going to be on the map and i can make my family proud that's one of my main goals and to share that passion with my brother is amazing it's the it's the best thing you can have really and even you know going back to my previous point where I said, I'm injured right now and I'm going to sessions with my brother, watching my brother sparring and I'm learning from him right now. I'm learning from him. We're talking about the sparring sessions. We're developing new skills, you know. He's doing it uh, on the mats every day. I'm doing it in my mind. And then I just feel like because of him, I'm getting so much better. And I have been throughout my whole life, you know. There isn't, there isn't a day where, you know, someone feels like, oh, I'm not training. No, no, no. The other one pushes, and he's like, "No, we going. You know, we going training." And then, and then, and it's been like that since the beginning. It, we knew what what the goal was, and what the goal is, and that is to become world champions in two weight divisions simultaneously. And then he can move up to middleweight, and I'll move up to welterweight, get that second belt. But we've been following that all along, and I believe my brother will be in the UFC next year. He's gonna have a couple, a couple more fights on cage warriors, and he's gonna be in the UFC as well. And I think that's when the uh, fig like name will really get out there. No, yeah, absolutely. And I can even imagine on the recent trip to Poland, while you were obviously just relaxing and not training, you know, just learning from him. You know, the reception must have been phenomenal when you guys went to Poland. Talk to me about the trip and just what it was like to see friends and family, and just really. Be there and, you know, have, be recognized for your talents, but also just have a great support system around you. Yeah, it was really good. To be honest, because I, I went to my sister and she lives in like this remote village where there's no one there. I was bit, a bit hidden away, but I had a really good time because I, I got to see my family. And of course, I felt the support from them and from all the people around. And uh, yeah, the trip was really enjoyable. Although I was resting most of the time, I tried to do it here and there. And also, uh, a good thing to do in Poland is this is a, this is advice, probably not for you, because you're in America, but it's to go shooting. <laughs> I went shooting there, and in the UK, they don't allow any shooting. So no, I, yeah. went, I went to shoot some good guns. The AR-15, uh, AK-47, I shot a Magnum as well. So um, I'm planning on going the next time when I go to Poland. I'm planning on doing some. Uh, some more some more shooting but a, a bit more dynamic so just moving around with the weapons so no, i'm yeah. really looking forward to that as well <laughs> i love when you mentioned america i'm like yeah i mean yeah we got i mean yeah, i would you say that i mean <laughs> hey not a hey not anymore i'm just saying that like people think America, there is a shooting happening every other moment. It's not at all. I mean, we got ranges like everywhere, though. It's crazy. Like over here yeah. in America, we got ranges. Like I got a range a couple, like 10, 15 minutes from my house. I, we got a range. We can go to the desert. It's not even that. I think American gun culture is a little bit of people are like, oh, it's just like shootings and whatnot. But no, like, I don't know. It's just like right now it's a weird subject here. But like you mentioned, uh, in Poland, yeah. you could just go kick back, shoot at a mountain with no regard for yeah. any cops coming I mean through. I shooting at targets, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying any, anything else. I mean, shooting at pr practice, practice shots, yeah? No, yeah. Yeah, but 
I know in America when I when I go to America I'm gonna go to some ranges as well. Oh for try sure. Some gun. Yeah, I would like to see it. I would like to see how it is over there. No, and, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Well, we got a. Oh, I think, well, I mean, Did it's obvious. Shooting? We got me. I've been shooting once, but no, I haven't been since. But we got a booming gun culture for sure. I mean, it's a, obviously a topic of contention across the world. But of I won't. Course, get, we yeah. won't. We won't get too deep into that. But I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just a nice time to go to the range, blow off some steam, and you know, shoot some targets. Targets, yeah. everyone. No, nothing else. Just targets. The targets. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about targets. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's awesome to hear. And you know, obviously. A much needed time away from all the chaos that's surrounding just the recovery and you know it's it's a nice reset i think more importantly from everything that happens outside and i mean you mentioned obviously six months into your recovery already since the surgery you look like you're on a great timeline already i mean thank you so much for your time first and foremost michal you know one of the best guys on the active roster in my opinion haven't gotten the chance to show that unfortunately due to injury but I have no doubt that your next fight is going to reflect that beautifully. And I wanted to ask you just in terms of personal goals, you know, the recovery timeline and when we can expect to maybe hopefully see you in the octagon again. Yeah, I, I should be back in March next year. So hopefully if they have a card in London, I'll be on that. But I'm also hoping that the UFC will, will go to Poland because I would love to fight in front of the Polish fans and I can't wait for that and... When I, if that doesn't happen next year and they don't do an event in Poland, I'm going to be asking for it for the next year. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, because I think, I think they can make a very good card. I think they can make a oh, very yeah. solid card. You have Gamrot, Jan Bohovic. Uh, Joanna is retired, but I know that maybe she'll be persuaded to come in as well. So there's a lot of good Polish talent that they can make a, a very good card and they'll sign my brother as well next year. So. I think it will happen, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Oh yeah, definitely. They got so much talent, they could stack a card from main card to prelims yeah. even with just Polish talent. You know, you look at heavyweight, you got Chibura, you got Blakovic at light heavyweight. At middleweight, I don't, I'm not sure we have anyone uh, in from Poland, you got welterweight. And then at lightweight, you got yourself, Gamrot, and then obviously you got Karolina Kowalkiewicz, you got just a heaps of yeah. talent. If I'm missing anyone, I apologize. But we need to see the UFC in Poland, even just as a fight night. As a fight night, it would be phenomenal to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Hopefully, but I'm happy to fight in London. I I fought in London many times, and the crowd is amazing there as well. And it, it feels great to fight in London. I would like to. I fought at the O2 in the go, which is the slightly smaller arena on the side. But I would lo love to fight at the O2. Uh, up front of the British crowd as well. Absolutely, and I think we all, I speak for everyone, Michal, when I say we look forward to watching you fight soon, whenever that may be, Poland, England, stateside, you name it, wherever it is, I think everyone's going to tune in. And I wanted to thank you so much for your time, first and foremost, for the quick opportunity and chat. Wish you the best of luck in the continual of your recovery. I know that you're aching to get back in there next Tuesday and just get uh, some hard rounds in boxing, or just, you know, any rounds in boxing. I know that you're ready to do that. And I wish you the best of luck there. And I wanted to thank you and the fans at home for watching. This has been an honor and a blast. If you guys are interested in checking out Mihal's social medias, I will be linking them in the description down below. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this interview. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.